Bu bir hani. By the time we freshened up, it was about 5 p.m. So we grabbed a map from our reception and decided to keep our exploring short for the day. So we headed straight to the Garden of Dreams. It was recommended by our receptionist and it was just a five minute walk from our hotel. The Garden of Dreams is an oasis of greenery in the middle of Kathmandu city. This beautiful garden was made back in the 1920s. We took this time to completely relax and unwind from the tedious traveling that we had to do earlier on the day. It was completely worth it, you guys. We just got out of Garden of Dreams and now we are on the hunt for momos and our restaurant receptionist suggested a place called Gaia so we are trying to find Gaia and we are in this really cute street it looks so pretty with these cute little stores um, let me show you how it looks The food has arrived. We've got a bunch of momos and that onion rings guys, they taste like Cheetos onion rings. <laughs> Just so delicious. Mm -mm -mm. Good morning guys. The time is about 10.30 a.m. and we slowly rose and shun. <laughs> Had a little bit of breakfast. We are staying in this hotel called Hotel Amaryllis. If you're looking for a good budget hotel right next to the city, I guess this is a good place. But if you want a toilet that works, not a good place. The rooms are clean though and the staff is really helpful and kind. But it's a really cute hotel, I have to tell you that. Because I'm looking out of the window right now and it's really cute, very homely. And actually even the staff makes you feel very much at home. But the hotel, the toilet doesn't work you guys. I mean it works but you know what I'm saying I'm not gonna go into details we were just about to get out but it's raining cats and dogs now and we really wanted to see a few uh, temples today but I really hope the rain dies down we do have our umbrellas and our raincoats and stuff but who wants to walk around in the rain right it's it's like a good time to just sit inside somewhere and enjoy it from inside but we really don't have that kind of time I love the sound of rain Who's excited? Me! Me. <laughs> Where are we going? Budanath! <laughs> <laughs> We're going to Pashupati Nath. Just inside you guys the intricate work of the temple and all the spiritual aura that was there inside was just stunning all the uh, believers all the prayers all the monks uh, even the animals it was just it was a really divine feeling but unfortunately we couldn't record inside so I'm so sorry about that and uh, when we got inside as you saw in uh, the clips it was really really raining heavily right now the rain has kind of died so which is why my makeup is all smudged if I look a little goth please excuse me
Pashupati Nath Temple is one of the most sacred Hindu temples of the world. It is located on the banks of Bagmati River on the eastern outskirts of Kathmandu. Pashupati Nath Temple's existence dates back to 400 BC. This temple complex is on UNESCO World Heritage Sites list since 1979. This is the temple of Goddess Durga. Now, uh, since she is a goddess of destruction, 300 years ago they used to sacrifice human beings over here. That small square you see that? Whoa. They used to make them kneel down over there and then they used to uh, cut their head wow. and then they used to pour the blood into the temple. Whoa. But uh, now because of human rights, they are not able to do that. Mm -hmm. So they sacrifice animals now oh. and pour the blood inside and the rest of the animal is eaten. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that? The Kama Sutra is inscribed into the wood of the temple. Right now we are on the other side of the temple and actually there's a lot more to see over here and this is like a blessing, a part of a blessing that's on my forehead right now. Every year this temple attracts many elderly followers of Hinduism to find shelter for their last several weeks of their lives. To meet death, be cremated on the banks of the river. That is where the cremations are conducted. The place definitely has an aura of death and you can smell the cremation. It is believed that those who die in Pashupatinath temple are reborn as a human regardless of any misconduct that could worsen their karma. We are in this place called Budanath right now and we've taken a short break and gotten into a little restaurant called Lava and we're just having a little bit of momos, taking a little break, uh, drying ourselves up <laughs> and then we'll continue with the Buddha temple. That's what we're doing right now. The temple is right here and people can walk across the temple and pray. All across the temple there are little souvenir shops and definitely a lot of tourists and a lot of locals as well who come here for prayers. Bodhnath Stupa is the largest stupa in Nepal and the holiest Tibetan Buddhist temple outside Tibet. Stopping by this place called Roadhouse Cafe for lunch. It's right in this area. And you've got this lovely view. Not like that. Is that magic? Genos. It was so easy. Do I have a practice? Totally. Get up. Open. Open. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, we get it. this little van, by the way. We got an offer for 3,500 Nepali rupees for one day. So far, we've only covered two locations we were supposed to cover five but it really takes time so 
Swayambhunath, an ancient religious architecture on top of a hill in the Kathmandu Valley. The Tibetan name of the site means sublime trees for the many varieties of trees found on the hill. It is one of the most sacred Buddhist pilgrimage sites. Swayambhunath is also known as the monkey temple as there are holy monkeys living in the northwest part of the temple. Swayambhunath is among the oldest religious sites in Nepal. It was built in the beginning of the 5th century, guys. We sat down at the highest point of the hill and enjoyed the beautiful and serene sunset overlooking the very busy city of Kathmandu. We just got back to the room and changed into something comfortable and we just got out to check out, I don't know, like a Garbar no, Square. I know what it is. It's a place but you won't be able to really get inside because uh, it's closed right now but apparently there are a lot of nice cafes outside in that area. We decided to just walk it out and um, all the markets over here, it just looks so much fun. The colours and the lights and the sound, it's a very inviting feeling. So we're just gonna take a stroll down the street and have a good time. We're gonna have momos! Momos! <laughs> so we're in front of Tamil Momo Hut. They even have momo making class. I don't think we have time for that. But we're gonna try their momos anyway. We ordered a second plate because it was just so tasty. Actually my mouth is drooling right now looking at it. So there we have the vegetarian momos and here we have the palak paneer momos. That is all the time we had for day one. We wound up our day by checking out the nightlife in Tamil. in front of the Kopan Monastery. The climb was quite a big deal actually because you have to get into a taxi and it's usually a small car and it's a quite a steep climb. It can be quite a bumpy ride. Already the view from up top of this hill is beautiful. Kopan Monastery is a Tibetan Buddhist monastery built on top of Kopan Hill. A sense of peace settles in you as you walk through the monastery, watching the monks go about their day. We were just sitting and chilling by a bench just now and a really really sweet monk, he came and he started having a conversation with us. It was so nice actually. He spoke about his visit to India and he was asking us how many days we've been here for and it was a good conversation with a monk. We took our time with our strolls through the beautiful garden, marvelling at the intricate work of art on the stupas. They made us a fresh plate of Nepali thali. It's so fresh, we actually waited like half an hour for them to make this. So we are really hungry and it looks so delicious and fresh. Oh guys, I can't take it anymore. Let me dig in and quickly let me show you the view. That was so good. I can't tell you how starved I was. Feeling so good right now. We just devoured the food. And I actually can eat some more, but I'm just gonna be not not gonna go all out. <laughs> Amazing. All I need right now is a nap, probably. Yeah. 
Hanuman Doka is a complex of structures with the royal palace of the Mala king and also of the Shah dynasty in the Darbar Square of central Kathmandu in Nepal. We walked through the site admiring the wonderful work of architecture. It was as though you could almost smell history on these walls. Like if you stood close enough, the pillars and the windows would tell you stories from the past. Isn't that awesome? Check out the pollution in Nepal, you guys. I don't know if you can see the dust on my glasses, which has settled on it just from a taxi ride to Darbar Square. We've had a really, really, really long day so far, and it looks like it's kind of starting to cloud up. It looks like it's gonna really, really pour down heavily. And one of our friends has met up with one of our local friends here, um, and she's taken us to this really wonderful place, the cafe called Meze. And um, on my Facebook it looked like uh, I have a few Nepali uh, followers and I did ask if you all are interested in meeting up. I'm so tired guys, I can't talk properly. But anyways, I just don't have Wi-Fi connection so I couldn't really connect with anybody. I, I don't know if anybody replied, I don't know what's the status. So I'm sorry about that. I hope nobody was waiting for me. So anyways, let me show you the bar. Oh, it looks really nice. I'm so excited to see a nice place like this. And with fun conversations and delicious little nibbles, we ended our stay in Kathmandu. I shall see you in my upcoming Pokhra vlog, guys. Until then, hope you enjoy my older travel vlogs. Let's keep in touch on Instagram, Snapchat or Facebook. See ya!